Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. And once again, I just watched a pointless and unnecessary remake, just like all the other unnecessary remakes I've been seeing for the past couple years, not to mention a decade ago, such as uh, Annie, To a Recall, Robocop, Red Dawn, you name it. It's or even horror remakes like A Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. Wow, this list can go on and on and on and on. And it's just going to keep continuing to make even more of a huge list of good movies turn into shit. Like this one that I just saw right now called Poltergeist. That's right, a movie that was based on the 1982 horror classic that was produced by Steven Spielberg, who also wrote the story along with all the other writers. And it was directed by Toby Hooper, the same man who gave us the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I know they had a controversy on whenever who directed the film the most, Spielberg or Hooper. Well, it didn't matter to me anyway because it's still holds up as one of the scariest movies ever made and still is today it hasn't been quite dated as it seems other than maybe the, the technology that they put into it it's basically the same I mean it's a movie about a family that's living in the suburbs they just moved in until suddenly at night they spotted some weird and strange spirits that's coming right straight to the television set. Yeah, a lot of demons that's crawling around. That uh, one little girl named Carol Ann actually has spotted. And she started communicating with them. And, and then she winds up uh, putting her hands on the screen. And a lot of them actually appeared and then... The house started shaking around, including their, their bedroom. And then, when they actually spotted it, she actually says that classic line that no one has ever forgotten. They're here! It just never gets old. But yet, this was a movie that I saw as a kid. I remember watching this on TV a lot. I remember how frightening and terrifying that I actually felt when I saw this. I actually ran as all the way straight to the bedroom and covered myself with the covers. That's how frightened I actually was when I saw this movie. I would still be scared today, I mean, once I watch it again. Because it still holds up, no doubt about it. This version is basically what they're going to go for. The, the running time is even shorter than the original film, though it's almost a little longer than the sequel, Poltergeist to the other side. But with more CGI put into it, some bad acting that's floating around, more CGI effects, none of which uh, actually held my interest into, some more uh, jump scares, just like in, in the original film, because there were jump scares. Plus, they're going to add everything that's very similar to the original. I mean, they're going to add some more scary scenes. Because we know in the original film, we, we remember the scene about the tree. Or even the clown, the creepy clown. Not to mention <laughs> all the toys, you know, moving around and doing a lot of crazy noises and everything. A lot of electronic sounds. A lot of strange things bumping into the night. And of course, who couldn't forget the face peeling scene. That definitely creeps everybody out. Yeah. Which they actually had done all of that with practical effects. And they could still use practical effects today. This is just all CGI bullshit. That's all it is. And not to mention all the equipment that they use are just today's technology. Yeah, because I know they're going to be using iPads, cell phones, uh, laptops, <laughs> yeah, with webcams and all that, HDTVs, 
reality shows, all this today garbage that we're getting in this shitty decade that we're in. Because they thought, oh, things aren't getting any better in the 80s and 90s, so we're going to get more bullshit here from the 2000s and 2010s. Fuck these assholes. Well, <laughs> that's more than what you bargained for with this lousy, lazy attempt to remake a classic. But, <laughs> well, here it goes. The movie stars Sam Walkwell, a good actor, by the way, who's been in a lot of movies such as Moon and Matchstick Man, many others. Rosemary D. Witt from the TV show Mad Men. Jared Harris, also from Mad Men. <laughs> Hard to believe. Jane Adams, Sexton Charbino, Kyle Catlett, Kennedy Clemens, Nicholas Braun, Susan Haywood, and Sama Batia. It's written by David Lindsay Abera and it's directed by Gil Keenan, the same director that gave us the 2006 CGI motion capture animated feature Monster House, which was actually a very good movie that was based on a haunted house next door, which is actually produced by Robert Zemeckis production company Image Movers. He later directed that totally forgettable movie called City of Ember, which was based on the book, which actually stars Sashi Ronan from Atonement and Hannah, as well as Bill Murray and Tim Robbins. Now he went from Monster House to this crummy remake. The movie begins just like the original film, only this time it's not the Freeling family, it's the Bowen family named Eric and Amy, who are played by Sam Walkwell and Rosemary DeWitt, are actually planning on looking for a new beautiful home in the suburbs along with their three children, their eldest daughter Kendra along with their son Griffin, and their youngest daughter Madison, or simply Maddie, who are played by Saxon Charbino, Kyle Catlett, and Kendi Clemmings. Yeah, their father Eric had recently been laid off and decided to search for a new house so in order for them to stay, which a real estate agency, very perky, had hired them to um, check the house out. And they finally moved in you know, a day later. You know, they already had to uh, pack up all the stuff that they, they set up on all their rooms and everything. And they're basically spending their first night where, you know, already Maddie and and uh, Griffin had set up all these toys and all this other stuff in the rooms. Along with Kendra, who was actually watching the TV show called Haunted House Cleaners. Yeah, a reality show with... Um, a creepy guy named Kerrigan Burke who who goes around, you know, searching for all these haunted houses, sort of like, you know, <laughs> ghost hunters. Only he basically goes around, you know, cleaning the, the houses. That's what she actually has that line. The house is clean. Yeah, and they even set it up on top with that uh, hashtag on there. Yeah, she she was actually watching it with her friend. That she was talking on her laptop, you know, on Skype, you know, and they're already getting ready to go to bed, you know, while, you know, Eric and Amy was just, you know, <laughs> planning to go to sleep and already talking about their underwear, you know, my underwear is sad, but my underwear is happy, that sort of joke, ugh, doesn't belong in a movie like this. Then Griffin started to spot at some... A lot of strange things happening underneath his room where there was an attic that's filled with clown dolls, you know, a whole box full of them. And suddenly when when he went inside the attic, they actually spotted a digital squirrel. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's all done in CGI. <laughs> I guess they just couldn't afford a real life squirrel for this movie. Yeah. Anyway, that that causes uh, Griffin to actually stay in their bedroom. So suddenly, 
he started hearing some very strange noises that's hidden underneath the walls. And then a lot of lights and electronic devices start turning on and off. A lot of strange things just keep moving. And then suddenly Griffin went downstairs and found Maddie already uh, communicating on an HD TV set that's just like in the original film where you know you saw Carol Ann actually communicating and, and putting her hands on the screen and all the mysterious stuff was happening uh, between the TV set from that snow background. Yep, it's just like that. But this time you see all the handprints, lots of handprints uh, that's placed on the screen. And then, you know, she talks to uh, Griffin on the side right there and saying, they're coming. And then all the crazy things are starting to happen, which actually woke in Eric and Amy. And I think Kendra also got woken up too. Then Maddie actually said that famous line that you actually heard in the original movie, only t this time it sounded more different than ever. You know, you know that line. They're here! Except this time Maddie actually says, They're here! Unbelievable. They, they just couldn't get the line exactly right. So. The entire family had actually learned that this house alone was built on an old cemetery which only the headstones but not the bodies were moved inside this particular neighborhood. At the house, Kendra's phone has begun to, to pick up some strange sounds after she started texting with her friend. Yeah, all, all that flickering stuff that was happening just like the TV was. And then she went straight to the basement where she spotted all that tar that's shooting up from the ground and then a corpse hand shows up and grabs her leg meanwhile Griffin already terrifying in his bedroom yeah during that stormy night you started seeing the, the clown that came from the box actually appearing and starting to to grab Griffin and attack him so he actually you know smashes him with his foot and then and then all of a sudden, the tree started to, to pick up and actually starting to grab Griffin after he spotted uh, Maddie already hiding under beneath the, the closet. Yeah, the same closet which they actually touches the, the knobs and they experience a lot of electricity shooting up from their head. Just like how they touch the electric globe. And all of a sudden, the tree actually grabbed uh, Griffin and, and already uh, already flying all, all the way through the window while Maddie was already been taken through the closet walls from the other side so it's already been grabbed and then after that Eric and Amy had arrived and, and spotted uh, Griffin hanging on the tree and then Kendra came by and, and already had screaming and told them that they actually took Maddie and Maddie was already already disappeared inside the uh, the other side of the walls and and went straight into the, the TV set where they can actually hear Maddie's voice a little bit so they thought the only way to actually save Maddie was to contact the investigator at the paranormal research department named Dr. Brooke Powell was played by Jane Adams. So Amy and Griffin had visited them and the whole staff had set up the entire equipment in the house. You know they started using all these GPS locators for everyone so they could see exactly what's happening inside the house. Well they did actually spotted Maddie already hidden inside the, the other side between the walls and all the lights that's going around and the investigators have realized that this haunting that they're experiencing in the house is called a poltergeist. So they thought the only way to actually help this out was to hire a television personality named Carrick and Burke, as we already saw. He came by to arrive and explain that Madison is an impossible psychic who's able to communicate with spirits. You know, all these demons and everything that's hidden on the other side. 
So he reveals that the poltergeists are trapped because they are angry that only the headstones were moved to the new cemetery. But the bodies, of course, had remained. So they planned on using Madison to free them for their purgatory. And Kerrigan decided to come up with a plan to actually get Madison back by actually anchoring the rope from Madison room and toss it into the vortex. So that way they can they get over leading Madison to be alone in the first place so they can go straight to the portal himself. And once they found Maddie, the po the Poltergeist attempts to destroy the rope to trap them, but they both escape. So of course, you know, Griffin decided to go after Maddie so he can get him out of the the other side, which I know they actually uh, tried to use the drone, um, his uh, remote control drone to actually hook up the camera and be able to, sh to go straight inside the, the closet wall just to see m where Maddie is. Yeah, you can see a, a perfectly good close-up of, of what the other side looks like with all these bodies uh, running around. And then, uh, so yeah, Griffin tries to actually uh, grab Maddie out of there and with the help of uh, Kerrigan and, and Eric, so they pull him out um, they're they're already free, and they actually put them inside the tub so they could wash them up to see if they're okay. And everything was perfect, so they they did a good job. Until all of a sudden, you know, more more stuff had started to happen once the Bowen started to flee from the house, and already you know they they actually f you know they actually flipped their their van, and all and then. And they actually went straight into the <laughs> the garage, and they're about to once again take Maddie away, and they're trying to get him out of there. So, so that way Kerrigan can go around and actually uh, stop them. So once they try to get the you know, Maddie and the rest of the family out of there, until and they did until the house was starting to explode with all that light shooting up from the other side and. And of course, they drive into the mini van. Yeah, that uh, mini van, that small car that they had, so they can get away from from it all. Well, Kerrigan is already in there, already with with the whole staff is just already spotting uh, Kerrigan on where he's at, and so on and so forth. And then, then the next uh, morning, or or the next day, they actually uh, had a new car and they. They're still looking for a new house, once again seeing the same realtor, you know, to see how this house is going to turn out. So they just moved. So they decided to leave anyway and <laughs> decided to go to a much better uh, place, you know. <laughs> so that way they could survive the incident. And yet the movie ends. And oh, brother. It basically plays exactly the same like the original, only we get more of the same junk. All these horror films that we're getting in recent years. Yeah, and they, they put a lot of that into it. I also noticed they started putting some other similar scenes that's just like in the original film. There was that one scene where where Eric was actually drinking um, some alcohol on, on a cup. And then suddenly he started spitting all that mud that came right in, into his mouth. And a lot of earthworms started showing up. And then you look underneath that sink and... You notice that his face is already melting out. That was actually a replica of the face uh, peeling scene where, where the guy next door actually started to come inside late at night trying to grab a snack, and yeah, you know, midnight snack, and where he spotted all these uh, maggots that's eating the, the chicken. And then he went into the bathroom, and then suddenly his face started to peel off. Only reviewing a skeleton. Yeah, it was a flashback. And there's some ridiculous scenes in, involving that that guy, the cameraman, who actually was ready to set up the equipment by by using the screwdriver to screw inside the closet wall. But suddenly the, the they actually grabbed the the screwdriver underneath his arms, and and then it started. Uh, <laughs> But they're ready to actually kill the the guy and with that weird screams such as ah 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 
while the screwdriver was ready to stab him. Yeah, because it was already stabbing three times, and there was even one close-up shot that was out of focus. A little bit. Yeah, wh what the hell is that? It, it, it's not scary, it's laughable. Once again, they just keep putting all these stupid lines and stupid jokes in the mix of the movie, and and they even had some similar lines that's from the original movie. Yeah, and the fact that you get uh, the guy, <laughs> Keratin Burke, yeah, instead of having a psychic lady, you just get uh, a reality show TV personality to join in. So, yeah, they even show a scene of where, where it, uh, he actually showed uh, his leg that's already, you know, fractured. He took out half of his skin out that causes them to throw up. And then he got that scar on his face. And he comes up with all these lines. And Not to mention he was actually uh, originally married to Brooke Powell. Yeah, because they were also making conversations. One, And there's a lot of stupid crap that they went into the movie. It just goes on and on and on. Lousy jump scares all the way around. Yeah, the running time is only 93 minutes. I know there's going to be an extended cut that's coming out on Blu-ray and DVD, but it doesn't make a difference anyway, because <laughs> I bet they must have added all, all the stuff that's left out in the rough cut. It doesn't matter, because it still fucking stinks. One of the worst movies so far this year, and I've seen plenty of bad movies already with Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Well, it's still going to continue with even more bad movies that year because I just can't wait for this to be over. <laughs> In fact, this movie is even worse than Poltergeist Free alone. The only good thing about it though is that at least we don't have to hear them scream their names a thousand times. Yeah, we don't have to hear all these name calling that's being screamed out every single scene that we see in the movie. No matter what happens. So, if you love Poltergeist, avoid this garbage. S just stick to the 1982 film. It's it's way better. It had a much better story. A lot of scary scenes. Everything they, they went into. There's no need for this garbage. It didn't need to be remade at all. Just like all the other 100% uh, good movies out there being remade. Because Hollywood is, is being run by idiots. Yeah, it just sucks to be in this industry nowadays. And I really miss the, the whole quality of, of what filmmaking was really all about. Now it's just nothing but a product. That's all it is. So, yes, once again, avoid this garbage. So I give the remake one star. I'm Joseph Bora, and I'll see you later. Much later. Bye.